Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So let's see the difference. So this is what you will be calculating now. Okay. So the problem that we saw earlier, we assume dry air. Now we say no, it's not dry. It is 80 percent relative humidity. So let's see what is the error you get in the calculations. So, to calculate this error, first of all, you will have to find out what is the value of E at sea level, because in this case, they should be flying at sea level and that too under ISA conditions. So, which means you will have to get the value of So, apply this particular formula, get the value of E s for uh, C of 15 degrees Celsius. Yeah, do not look at me, please do the calculation. So, C is not 0 in this case, C is the ambient air temperature in degrees centigrade. So, under sea level IC condition, what is the temperature? 15 degrees centigrade. So, you put C equal to 15 and get the value of ES 1695. Yeah, it was around 1700, correct. Units will be Pascals, units will be Pascals. So, the value of ES is around 1695, okay. So, ES is 1695 and we have E as RH by 100 into ES, where RH is expressed in percentage. So, E will be 80 by 100 into this number or 0.8 times that number, 0.8 times 1700, okay, 1356. Now, let us go here straight. So, calculate the value of rho A with E included. P s is going to be ambient air pressure at sea level as the condition which is 101325 Pascals. The value of E just now you got, multiply that value with 0 0.378, subtract it from 101325, multiply by this 0 0.003484 and divide by the ambient air temperature. In this case, the value of temperature is not centigrade. Kelvin. This is in Kelvin. 1.209. 1 1.209. Okay. 1.209. Okay. Now, you have to verify what is the value of density you get if you ignore the value, ignore this correction. It should come to 1.2256. Let us check. Check kya karna. That is known. So, no need to calculate anything. You can, you can just do uh, P by RT. If you do P by RT, you will get rho. P 101325, R is 287 kg per degree Kelvin, T is 288.16. You will get 1.2256. So, against 1.2256, you got 1.20. 209. So, what is the percentage error? Okay. So, if it is 1.219, what is the percentage error between that and 1.2256? 0.44, yeah. Depends on what is you take as the baseline. 
Uh, base length will be 1.2 by 56. It should be less actually, it should not be so much. 0.4 percent, yes, 0 0.36 or 0.4 percent is what I know. It should be 0.4 percent, right, correct, 0.4 percent. So, nothing great, why are you worried about 0.4 percent? All these huge derivations, Dalton law and Amagat law, blah, 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 0.4 percent. But that is only true at sea level and that to ISA conditions with humidity of 80 percent. Okay. Of course, humidity cannot be really more than 80, 90 I mean, versus 100 percent, then it will condense. So, it may seem right now that you know this is the exercise in wilderness, but when you do this calculation for let us say ISA plus 30 degrees centigrade, okay, you will find this error will be 3.5 percent, 4 percent and 3.5 percent error in the basic, see we are for 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 airships, the only source of lift is static lift. Dynamic lift is only a gift, only when you start moving. So, if you start with a 3.4 percent error on the basic calculations, it is not acceptable. So, therefore, when you want to calculate the parameters, it is important that you have exact numbers with you. Okay. So, this we have done now. Next concept very quickly to be done is the static lift. Static lift is you know the difference. So, the <coughs> gross lift is rho a into v envelope into g, we have already seen this, right. And we also know from our, of course, with all the errors in E, which I will correct when I upload this slide, rho a can be related to this number. So, therefore, L g will be just put the value of rho a, it will be that same expression into v and v into g. So, this is how you can calculate the gross lift. It is nothing the same formula with you know uh, v e and v into g added at the end of it. Okay. Now, k is the aerostatic constant. Now, this is different from the previous one because now we have uh, g also. So, it will be 10 times more. So, it is a constant. So, you can say that the net or the gross, not net, gross lift is P s minus 1 minus R d w v into E upon T a times k into v e n v, where k is a constant. So, if the envelope volume is known to you, if the relative density is known to you, that also is known to you, 1 minus R d is actually a fixed number for water vapor. So, it should not be a problem. So, let us take two very simple cases, dry atmosphere, gross, gross lift is nothing but multiplication of these three things, rho a we have already seen before. So, the gross lift is very simple, in dry air ignoring humidity, the gross lift is only P s by T a into k into V e and V, easy to calculate. But when you have ISA conditions, then formula is the same but rho becomes rho s which is the standard standard ambient temperature and condition. Now, this is known to some students who have done aircraft design course and performance courses that density of air up to 11 kilometers in atmosphere can be assumed to vary because temperature varies linearly. There is a loss of 6.5 degrees per kilometer altitude. So, therefore, uh, T by T naught to the power 4.259 gives you the pressure uh, temperature ratio okay. to the power will give you the density ratio. So, rho s can be easily calculated for any operating condition in ISA. Sea level value rho 0 which is 1.2256 multiply by 1 minus L. L is the lapse rate. I am taking lapse rate as positive actually L is negative. So, you can say 1 plus a negative number, but be very careful. If you blindly apply formula, you will make a mistake. Uh, the value of L is 6.5 degrees loss per altitude, but it is taken as plus because the formula already has negative. So, by this you can calculate the value of rho s. If rho s is known to you, V envelope is known to you, multiply by g, you get the value of rho g. This is a condition of dry, uh, sorry, ISA conditions and we are not assuming any value may present. 
it's as, as this is what we did also this is what you calculated few minutes ago now the last problem that i wanted to do today is i wanted to calculate the percentage loss in gross lift when it is operated at an airfield with pressure as 10200 pascal temperature 27 degrees centigrade and an rh this will be temperature so now to calculate this what is your uh, what are the steps you will follow first thing you will do is you will calculate the value of density of air at this condition so now the ambient temperature is also going to play a role and the ambient pressure also is not 101325 but it is some other number so this is some air field where we read the values as 10200 and we calculate the temperature so what steps will you follow so first thing you calculate is the saturated vapor pressure that is the value of es so for that the same formula as before the value of c will be 27 degrees so first thing i need is how many pascal do you get 3548 seems to be okay you have used the approximate formula right okay the exact formula gives 3566 you get 3548 negligible difference so we will accept it so first thing you will do is you will calculate the uh, pressure okay then let's see can you now calculate the value of e which is the actual vapor pressure 50% 50% of this okay right then now let's calculate the value of lift using this simple formula So what is the envelope volume you are taking? Seven thousand. And what is the T A or T S you are taking? Three hundred degree. Correct. So is your eighty point? Eighty-two point three seven kilometer. Okay. Yeah, eighty point eight seems more appropriate. Eighty point eight, eighty point seven, eighty point eight kilonewtons. Right. Now, what about the gross lift? This is in newtons. So suppose, suppose I want the force in kilograms. Just divide by the value of nine point eight zero seven. Okay.